by the people. Create the appearance of popular support. Neutralize the opposition. Precipitate mob violence. Create the semblance of a revolution. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny. Back in here, one more reaction video, ladies and gentlemen. And today we got a little history lesson for you. This film is titled Anarchy USA. It was originally released in 1966, I believe, by G. Edward Griffin. He actually follows me on Twitter. Shout out to the homie. Um, and it's a very informational little film that I wanted to bring to the channel. If this is your first time pulling up, get on in here. As I love to say, we simply spirits in case the human flesh, baby. That's all. Simply trying to figure out this thing called life. Not nearly as divided as the mainstream media tries to make it seem every single day. Now, we are going to jump ahead to the 33-minute mark of this film. And uh, if you dig what you hear, share far and wide. For the conquest of the world is as follows. First, we will take Eastern Europe. Next, the masses of Asia. Then we shall encircle the last bastion of capitalism, the United States of America. We will not have to attack. It will fall like overripe fruit into our hands. By October of 1950, all of Eastern Europe was securely locked behind the Iron Curtain. By the summer of 1954, the greater part of Asia had fallen to the Kremlin's strategy and tactics. And each year, more nations lose their sovereignty to Marxist intrigues, or degenerate into Soviet satellites as communism hastens to complete the encirclement of the last bastion of capitalism. And what of the United States? How goes the battle in the land of the free and the home of the brave? The communist plan for the conquest of the United States was explained to the American comrades by Moscow's agent Joseph Pogani, this country by Stalin for the revolutionary movement. American Negro Problems was published in 1928 by Joseph Pogani using the alias John Pepper and carried the official communist line for America. 1928. The Workers' Communist Party of America in its fight against imperialism must recognize clearly the tremendous revolutionary possibilities of the liberation movement of the Negro people. The Black Belt of the South, with its starving and pauperized Negro farmers and Negro agricultural working masses, with its Jim Crowism, its semi-feudal status, and its political system still bearing the earmarks of the period of slavery, constitutes virtually a colony within the body of the United States of America. The Workers' Communist Party of America puts forward correctly as its central slogan, abolition of the whole system of race discrimination, full racial, social, and political equality for the Negro people. But it is necessary to supplement the struggle for the full racial, social, and political equality of the Negroes with a struggle for their right of national self-determination. Self-determination means the right to establish their own state to erect their own government if they choose to do so. The Negro communists should emphasize in their propaganda the establishment of a Negro Soviet Republic. In 1934, the communist writers James W. Ford and James S. Allen further defined... So this book, 1934, uh, FDR was running for president, if I'm not mistaken, in 1932 and 64% of black Americans started voting Democrat because they thought they were gonna get a piece of the New Deal, just as we relive history a little bit. And once again, I'm not telling anybody what to think, just the truth has to be known, right? So let's keep going. And the Soviet Negro Republic. The actual extent of this new republic would in all probability be approximately the present area in which the Negroes constitute the majority of the population. In other words, it would be approximately the present plantation area. It would be certain to include such cities as Richmond and Norfolk, Virginia, Columbia and Charleston, South Carolina, Atlanta, Augusta, Savannah, and Macon, Georgia, Montgomery, Alabama, New Orleans and Shreveport, Louisiana, 
Little Rock, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. These cities and the cities which lie within their spheres of influence became known in communist writings as the Black Belt of the South and were to constitute the nucleus of a future Soviet Republic. At the National Convention of the American Communist Party, held in New York City in June of 1940, James Ford, the Communist Party candidate for the Vice Presidency of the United States, said... For the Negro and the South. My people, the Negro people of America, have in the Communist Party their best defender, the unfailing champion of, the, of their cause. I accept its nomination for Vice President of the United States. By this time, the communist champions of the Negro race had hidden the revolutionary ideas and slogans for a Soviet Negro Republic behind the humanitarian banners of jobs, security, civil rights, and peace. Sound like somebody else, huh? These humanistic issues were to provide the friction necessary to divide the American people and lay the groundwork for revolution. I am Leonard Patterson. When I was a young man, only 23 years old, I joined the Communist Party. I was a member of the National Executive Committee of the American Young Communist League. In 1930, I was the official communist candidate for election to New York State Assembly. I knew Gus Hall and other top-ranking American communists very well because I trained with them at the Lenin University in Moscow. I joined the party because I honestly thought the communists were trying to help American Negroes. Now, how many people honestly thought that Black Lives Matter was, was trying to help black people? I did for a minute. How many people thought that Barack Obama was trying to help black people and repair race relations in America? Like, how many people thought from the angle they saw the Mike Brown shooting that, wow, this is this was this isn't fair? But they never saw the Shelby Steele Shelby, Shelby Steele documentary, Who Killed Mike Brown. See, there's two sides to every story. And what I've found in my life is that I've only been presented one side. This is why Frederick Douglass said, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Because when I can think for myself and read for myself, you can't program me and you can't manipulate me with your propaganda. So anybody who happens to watch this video, think for yourself, read for yourself, read the spook who sat by the door, read the autobiography of Malcolm X, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington, The Miseducation of the Negro, Color, Communism, and Common Sense by Manning Johnson, and spread your knowledge with the world. I broke away from the party when it became clear to me what the Commons were really up to, was to use the Negro people in this country as cannon fodder in a violent and bloody revolution aimed at the establishment of the American Soviet dictatorship. It was that simple and it is still that simple today. Man. Make no mistake about it. What is happening in the United States right now under the banner of civil rights is exactly what has happened in China, in Cuba, in Algeria, and in many other places around the world. I'm Julia Brown. For nine years, I was a member of the Communist Party, serving as an undercover agent for the FBI. During that time, I learned that the communist conspiracy had been planning and working for years to bring violent revolution to America. It was to be a communist revolution, 
but the great majority of the American people would not be allowed to realize that until it had already happened. They thought it was a civil rights movement. If all <laughs> goes according to the communist blueprint, Americans will believe that the chaos and violence has something to do with civil rights. Man, man, Our man. enemies were quick to find our weakest point for their attack. They knew that racial differences could provide them with an excellent wedge to divide our people. And isn't it comical that we still been divided over our racial differences? Like, just think about the fact that something they were you the propaganda that they were using sixty years ago is still working to today. <laughs> I'm not about to argue. We, about what color you are, bro. Like we spirit, we pure consciousness, and we have to rise above these low vibrational games, or we always gonna be political chumps, useful idiots, whatever whatever term you want to use. We have to be bigger than that, and stop just being puppets. You saw, seen the image with you know the humans under the monopoly board, and they say if you stand up, the game is over. And I don't think a lot of people realize how legit that picture really is. Their strategy simply has been to keep hammering on that wedge, to drive it deeper into our social structure, to open all wounds that have long since healed, and deliberately to create new ones yep. wherever they can. Now, he, he acted, he acted like a good nigga for the white folk. But I tell you, I don't want to. I don't want to even be around no more good niggas. I'm with them, no good Negroes. That's what they call Rodriguez, Rodriguez, a good Negro. I want to be with the bad niggas, cause I know what's happening with the bad niggas. That's where I want to be. I want to be with the niggas. Now, you know, at least back in the day, it was actual. He looked like he about at least eighty percent black saying this. Now you got Shine King and Colin Kaepernick, people disowning the white fa family members that raised them and gave them fantastic life. This concept, I want to be with the bad dick. It's like, for some reason, intellectuals, because I'm sure he went to college, went to a good high school, the black people who grew up around white individuals, they love to entice this message to urban black Americans because they don't fit in. So they got to ride their skin color. That's why the mayor here, Quinn Lucas, he is pro-black. And 90% of your celebrities are super pro-black because they grew up in a white area. So they, that's the only thing they know. I'm really from the hood, from the trenches. So I understand my skin color ain't got nothing to do with surviving this environment at all. But if I didn't grow up in it, I use my skin color as a get out of free jail car. I want to be with the bad niggas that don't want to ride on the back of the bus no more. And this is what Elder Davis will call you. And the bad niggas is not going to work for 18 or $20. Dollars. No, I want to be for the bad niggas who going to register and vote. Right. I want to be for the bad niggas going to swim on any God's beach where water yeah. is flowing. I want to be for this <laughs> not, not, not a part of the niggas that's raising their children with their wife. Not a part of the niggas who, who creating their own business, who was standing on two feet, who wasn't begging the government for a handout. You see how they made that sound cool? A.K.A. He, all he was saying is we want to go big the white man for stuff. That's all he really said. We, I don't want to do it on my own. I just want to beg the white man to take care of me. Sound like an individual who didn't grow up with a father or an individual, an individual who was educated in our system full of propaganda. Lyndon Johnson is the biggest nigger lover in the United States. <laughs> he may think that he can use his Justice Department with Bobby Kennedy at the head of it, and he may think that he can use J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI and the Army to force us white people here in St. Augustine and other parts of the nation to mix up with niggers. He but did. if he sends troops in here and puts a bayonet behind every one of us, we still will not mix up with a bunch of black savages. Yeah. Like A lot of people will hear this and get extremely offended. And I want to say, while this could be offensive to some, you've never heard my grandparents speak, right? And my grandpa raised me to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Everything you hear won't be sexy. It won't sound good to you. But people deserve to say what's on their mind. And I'm a firm believer that if you don't force integration, and it naturally happens. Frederick Douglass was married to a white woman. Malcolm X slept with plenty of, of white women. 
So this concept, anything that's forced on people, whether it was interracial dating or homosexuality or transgender, anything you force on humans is going to get a negative response. But if you let me naturally gravitate to something, then that may be for me. And we all know that, yet let alone we haven't woke up from what the video game that's being played in this matrix to keep manipulating us and have us divided over small petty issues. I'd like to say, in a, in a real sense, not fellow freedom fighters, but fellow slaves. For we all are slaves, not only in this society, not only in this community, but all over this nation and all over the world. Hold on, and this is what I can't get with. So right now you tell kids, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. If you go back to the 60s, we're all the slaves, we're all the slaves. At one point, have black Americans or Americans at, at all been taught to have self-confidence, to love themselves, to be proud of themselves? Because if all the black people feel like second-class citizens and all the white people feel like, oh, my God, I, I'm a bad person. I used to own slaves. Then the only people who believe in themselves are the immigrants. They don't want coming here and still building and accomplishing goals and dreams. They live in the American dream. While all the Americans are saying the American dream is dead and gone. That's why I say in a room full of a million people, you're still only with yourself. Make sure that conversation is nice. You can do anything. You can accomplish anything. You are not a slave. You are free. Whatever you want in this world, it's out here for you. Go get it. No matter how many times you get knocked down or stopped, or don't quit. Tuskegee Institute is still standing right now, and Booker T. Washington was born a slave. So if that man can accomplish creating a college, then the sky's the limit for you if you happen to watch this video. What you're doing here is very significant and it's very important. Then you follow up your friends and acquaintances. Hey, imagine being scared of these and people, ask them if they want to help put this fight over to save Strap up this and let's country go. from the onslaught on. of integration. You know the system is, they want to throw white children and colored children into the melting pot of integration, through out of which will come a conglomerated, balada, mongrel class of people. Both races will be destroyed in such a movement. And then you would hear him say that and say, oh my God, that's offensive. Do you see Colin Kaepernick? Do you see Sean King? I mean, I'm sure there's a whole list. You can let me know in the comments of other individuals who... They biracial, they just selling out both sides of the family for whatever money grab opportunity they can get. And, and it's really petty because at the end of the day, we all are just spirits in these dirt suits. I have black children and I have biracial children. And at the end of the day, I'm just daddy. <laughs> they don't look at each other as nothing more as brothers and sisters. And I wish as humans, we could be as mature as the children are and realize we just people. <laughs> I for one. Under God will die before I yield one inch to that kind of a movement in America. Hey, if all the Confederates could see what's going on now, oh, they don't even give a damn about the racial issues. Hold on, you. Not only are you saying that that little Susie can date a black boy, you're saying little Susie can turn into Bobby? <laughs> oh, they really grabbing their choppers and their guns and going to war. See, like a lot of people find this offensive. I, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm different, but as a man, I expect you to be tough. I expect you to be a warrior. I expect you to be a, a fighter. I expect you to be offensive. I, I play sports. I'm going to talk shit. I expect you to do the same. But whatever you talk, you got to be able to back up. But how soft and how feminine, how that's offensive, we can't speak our truth, I, I don't agree with that at all, man. I would much rather have men walking around like this 
than the current generation of soy boys we got. That's just my honest opinion. Dissension were sown among both the black and the white races. And inexorably, the people of the United States were being divided according to plan. Among the so-called downtrodden and oppressed, among the supposedly starving and pauperized Negroes, the enemy was referred to as Whitey. Mr. Charlie. The Man. And the Ofe. I never heard the Ofe. Or Mr. Charlie. They still phase say the man. one was well Why on its man? way. Now it was time to implement phase two. Create the appearance of popular support. Paint the black Beguile the streets, people right? of the United States and the world into believing the pious fraud that the civil rights uprising, led by a handful of agitators, was a popular movement of the whole Negro race in the United States. Now this doesn't mean that there isn't a legitimate need for the advancement of civil rights Thank you. for many of our Negro citizens. Of course, there is a need there. Otherwise, communist agitators posing as civil rights leaders could never hope to enlist massive support for their schemes. The aspirations of Negroes for full equality were not created by communists, but they are used by communists in such a way that idealistic Americans of all races can be tricked into implementing the blueprint for revolution. And that's the most unfortunate part is all of it sounds good, right? Racial equality, liberty and justice for all, advancement for people of color. <laughs> Career opportunity zone, all of it sounds good until you look, look, look up and see man, that the environment's not changing and the homicide rate isn't changing and the, and, and the ab abortions aren't changing. You look at your environment and say, hold on, what, we've been doing the same thing over and over and not getting a different result. And the minute you stick your head up and question it, you're a sellout. You don't love yourself. Content like this, I, like I said, I ain't trying to tell you what to think, but just, there's a certain political party that still uses all these tricks. They went out and, and painted Black Lives Matter across the street. There's a certain president that said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. As if that's all you are. That's all you're good for is a vote. Nothing more, nothing less. Having been on the inside of the Communist Party, it's easy for me to recognize this revolutionary agitation in disguise. But the average American finds it's hard to believe that something as worthy and noble sounding as a civil rights movement mm -hmm. could possibly be a communist maneuver. Yep, it's hard to believe black Communism lives are must be built with non-communist hands. The revolutionary accepts reform in order to use it as a cover for his illegal work. By concealing the true communist objectives behind appealing slogans and pretended humanitarian goals, the conspirators are able to dupe hundreds of uninformed opportunists and misguided idealists into supplying the non-communist hands needed in the overthrow of this republic. Thoroughly deceived, some of the Negroes cry for liberation through the slogan, Freedom Now. The Democratic slogan, one man, one vote, has gained wide acceptance. But perhaps the most popular slogan is Ben Seremos, the rallying cry of the deluded peasants of Cuba, Haiti, and Venezuela. Ben Seremos, we shall overcome, is now the rallying cry of the deluded peoples of the United States. Who would have knew that we shall overcome came from communism? I had no clue at all. I remember all the images of Martin Luther King and everybody. We shall overcome. Like I said, we've been played, tricked, bamboozled. Malcolm X was trying to wake us up a long time ago. But it's all right because through reaction videos, this younger generation, they will know the truth. 
and the truth shall set you free. And this is why it's comical when you see Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Joe Biden them all, they still doing this. 2023, they still going on that same bridge doing this to rock you to sleep, hitting you with the propaganda. Disconnect from the matrix and think for yourself because history doesn't have to go over and over. But until you make the unconscious conscious, it's going to keep repeating itself. And you're going to say that's just how life has to be. When I was studying communist tactics and strategy in Moscow, my instructors emphasized the importance of using honest grievances and popular slogans as a smokescreen to color up the true nature of the revolution. We were taught how to use propaganda and arouse the emotion of the masses. We learned how to set one group manipulation. and to make them hate each other. We learned the necessity of having martyrs, and we were even told how to create our own martyrs. George Floyd. If they did Ron not have the result from that, Jordan of hatred. We were taught the importance of getting large masses of people into the street for marches and demonstrations, and finally, we were instructed in ways to take off riots and make them spread and to keep them going. Sounds like 2020, right? Like this is in 1966, but this is identical to 2020. And what they call it, the summer of love in Seattle. It, it's extremely unfortunate how many people really have good hearts and they honestly think they are part of a, a cause that's that's for the greater good of humanity. Um, you know, I, I hope something in the future happens and more people can wake up and, and step away from it and see if you really want to help the world become the best version of yourself. You can't pour from an empty cup, but don't grow up and just want to be a social justice warrior your whole life. Life is so much bigger than that. Create a strong, happy family, raise some children, and that's how you can contribute to society. Not going out and begging for a billionaire's money because they was really smart and worked hard. And not saying that there aren't immoral people that are millionaires, but there's immoral people that's in the projects as well. So let's stop judging the world. Let's once again become the best versions of ourselves and, and spread knowledge, spread love, spread wisdom. When I returned to the United States, I was immediately given practical training. I participated in so-called nonviolent demonstrations mm. that were deliberately calculated to irritate white people and to violence against us. To deliberately I personally irritate was in charge white people. Of organizing a march on Washington to dramatize the Scottsboro Boys case. In New York about 1935. A Negro boy was reported killed by the owner of a store while in the act of stealing some merchandise. Communist Party headquarters decided to make a march out of the boy. So we went right to work, putting out handbills and holding open air meetings. In less than a half hour after we started, there was a race right on the front of street, complete with smashing wonders of white storekeepers, looting and all the rest. I'm not speaking of things I read about, these are things I personally participated in. It's unfortunate the game has been played on humanity, but you got to wake up and see what's going on around you. As it was in Cuba, so it was in Algeria. And so it is in the United States. In Jackson, Mississippi, Medgar Evers 
state field secretary for the NAACP, was shot in the back by an unknown assassin as he was entering his home. After lying in state in Mississippi, the body of World War II infantry GI Medgar Evers was sent to Washington, D.C. for burial in Arlington National Cemetery. Now a victim of the very communist agitation he had helped promote, Medgar Evers was able to further serve communist purposes by being glorified as a martyr in the supposed fight of the Negro people for freedom and justice. And that has not changed because the only time that a straight black man is important is once he's dead. See, right now we could go, we could go help the kids in Chicago, the kids of Baltimore, the kids of St. Louis. We can open up community centers. We can do a lot of things so they don't just become violent shooters. But we don't. We sit back on our hands. We put Democrat politicians in these cities. We make tough on gun laws, even though we know these young boys got throwaways left and right. And we just watch the homicides pile up and the funeral homes makes money and the t-shirt place makes money and whoever doing the fish fries make money and mamas keep crying and the system just repeats itself. And then the minute one of these black boys gets shot by a white man, they become a martyr. The minute they're in a, a police situation, they become a martyr. If George Floyd is in jail for sticking up that, that pregnant lady, then he's not at that gas station with that fake bill high on fentanyl. There's levels to these situations, but once again, we pick and choose what's important when it comes to life. If a black man kills a black man, it's not important. If a white man kills a black man, it's breaking news. If a black woman kills a black woman, it's not important. If a black woman goes to an abortion clinic to get an abortion from a white doctor, she's encouraged to kill that black life. The irony. Medgar Evers' remains were buried with full military honors and nationwide news coverage. Sounds like George Floyd, man. Didn't he have a gold casket, if I'm not mistaken? Mike Brown was nationwide. Trayvon was nationwide. As it was in Cuba, So it was in Algeria. And so it is in the United States. Mysterious bombings by assailants unknown plague the lives and property of the Negro people and serve to intimidate those who might speak out against the conspirators. The bombing of this Birmingham, Alabama church claimed the lives of four little girls attending Sunday school. A memorial service was held in Washington, D.C. for the four young victims, after which the mourners demonstrated their grief before the White House and the press. Um, and I was on a Jubilee TV show probably like a year ago. And I said, no matter how unfortunate the situation is, you need to grieve in your house with your family behind closed doors. Because nobody really cares, as unfortunate as that sound. When Takeoff lost his life, when, when Young Dolph, when Pop Smoke, it's all a money grab. Tupac is dead, but people still making documentaries about him. XX Extension is dead, but people still making it. It's, it's unfortunate, but the world doesn't care about you, but your family does. So no matter what hardships you're going through, deal with it at home with your family. Because if it's done in public on camera, you better believe somebody gonna try to make a dollar from it, which is extremely unfortunate, but that's the society we live in. A martyr that rallied the sympathies of the right, nation was the lovely Viola Greg Liuzzo, who was shot to death while driving between Selma and Montgomery, Alabama with a Negro civil rights worker. The American- And it's crazy to say, I'm thinking about how many young white women and white men have been sacrificed, thinking they was fighting on the, on the side of good thinking they were really doing the Lord's work. <laughs> like I said, the, the games that are played on humanity are sick. And I don't know who the enemy is, but be happy, be happy, be happy, and think for yourself because the enemy wants to take advantage of you and manipulate you, and there is a war for your soul. So if you would guard your body, make sure you guard your mind. American press told their shocked readers of her five children and husband. 
and her righteous zeal for justice that caused her to go to Alabama to help the American Negro gain the right to vote. Now, this little woman had five children and a husband and said, I'm putting my whole family on hold to go help black people get the right to vote. White women, please don't ever do that again in life. <laughs> like I said, they just, just, they keep making you feel like that's your highest purpose is to be a social justice warrior. Raise your children. I'm not saying that there aren't problems or issues in the world. I'm not saying that people don't get discriminated. But if you don't like something, work to change it productively. Like you work to change it. Create a different system. This is capitalism. Create competition and then bottom out so they don't exist no more. Don't go complain at their front door. This photo of Mrs. Liuzzo, taken during the Selma to Montgomery march and just prior to her death, points up the fact that the press failed to mention that the photo used to gain the sympathies of the nation was a high school photo taken almost 20 years earlier. What? That her five children were by three husbands. What? And that her name had been removed from Michigan's eligible voter list in accordance with state law because she had not used her voting privilege for six years. So you wasn't even voting, and you were here trying to get we people to vote. We were taught how to use propaganda. How to arouse the emotion of the masses. We learn how to set one group against the other and to make them hate each other. Still working. We learn to be stressed to having martyrs and we're even told how to create our own martyrs if they didn't automatically result from the atmosphere of hatred. Divide the people, then create the appearance of popular support. And if any of the alert, informed citizens call attention to the true revolutionary goals behind the humanitarian slogans, move into phase three and neutralize the opposition. Cancel culture. One effective way to neutralize any opposition is to liquidate it. In the summer of 1965, a respected Negro farmer in Alabama dared to speak out critically against the civil rights revolutionaries. In this cabin in late August, 87-year-old Perry Smaw struggled with an assailant who said he had come to get Perry's tongue. The Isn't that interesting if you think about it, though? You've never heard there being two sides of black advancement. We all know there was Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois, but as you move through history, it's like, Every black person was on the side of the civil rights movement and there was no opposition. You never heard anyone question it. There was never a checks and balance. There was no, we just, this is how we are straight up and down. And now we see why, because they were intimidated to not speak up or speak out against it. And it makes complete sense of what Martin Luther King said, I fear I've integrated my people into a burning building. The aged Negro's skull was crushed with a cast iron frying pan. The attackers striking with such force that the skillet was broken. Then the intruder pulled Perry's tongue from his mouth and with a butcher knife, cut it off all the way back to the old man's tongue. Wowzers. Perry Smaw, the man who dared defy the conspirators, died six days later. In and this is why I speak out and speak against the, the narrative that's being pushed on black people because I can stand for myself, bro. They not lynching people from trees no more. They ain't sicking dogs on us. The worst that can happen is somebody leave a negative comment under this video or give me a dislike. So I'm I'm really comfortable with speaking my truth, knowing men back in the day had to go through situations like this just for not going along with the propaganda of the government. China, Cuba, and Algeria, terror was also a most effective weapon in intimidating and neutralizing the opposition. And there's another, even more widely used method of neutralizing and paralyzing opposition to communism's conquests. We can and must write in a language which sows among the masses hate, revulsion, and scorn toward those who disagree with us. Members and front organizations must continually embarrass, discredit, and degrade our critics. When obstructionists become too irritating, label them as fascist or Nazi or anti-Semitic. Constantly associate Should those who oppose us with those names which already have a bad smell. The association will, after enough repetition, become fact in the public mind. 
by duping the American public into turning a deaf ear to the voices of... And I know these very tactics work because before I was enlightened, the minute I heard somebody say they watched Fox News, I looked at them differently. The minute they said they was conservative, I already didn't like them. No matter if we had been friends or if I had been at their house and they, all that, the minute they spoke something differently, I was like, oh, that's offensive. That's a trigger word. Like, and I had to step away from that and see that that's all fake. And it's fake to you, too. If you're watching this video, man, we all are being controlled. And if you walk down the street and it has 10 people, do you know what propaganda is? I promise of you, seven of them will have no clue. Warning, because the topics were controversial or because the patriots themselves had been ridiculed as extremists, racists, Ooh. fright peddlers, the conspirators White were ready to move one step closer to their hidden goals by precipitating mob homophobic. violence. Riots, demonstrations, street battles, detachments of a revolutionary army, such are the stages in the development of the popular uprising. The Communist Party will educate and organize the working masses for mass strikes and mass demonstrations. It is through struggles that the working masses are prepared for the final conflict for power. As these strikes grow in number and intensity, they acquire political character through unavoidable collision and open combat with the capitalistic state. Mass action culminates in insurrection and civil war. And as I make this video, if I'm not mistaken, the Hollywood writers are on strike right now. Hey, AI is coming for jobs like never before. And I ain't talking about Alan Iverson and his crossover. <laughs> if you don't think artificial intelligence is about to change humanity for some good and for some bad, I, I challenge you to really dig into it. Learn how chat GBT works and see how you can use AI to benefit your life. Because why they got all these people saying, we want $15 an hour, we want this. That's why there's fully automated McDonald's currently at the moment. You've been studying history, studying civet. But right now you got to put your history and your civets in the streets. You got to make the Constitution real. You got to make democracy real. Since 1960, since February the 1st, 1960, more than 50,000 of your fellow students have been arrested and jailed, beaten, placed police stalls and water hoses. Before we see real freedom, before we be able to walk down these streets with a sense of dignity and with a sense of pride and walk in freedom, no doubt there will be more jailings, more beating, more water hoses, more dogs. Who would sign up for that shit? Please. The other thing is this, we are determined that this city will not celebrate its quadricentennial as a segregated city if that celebration takes place. We plan to use everything within our power and all of the nonviolent weapons that our disposal to dramatize this blatant injustice and to demand that the federal government not put a cent in this city unless it decides to face the realities of desegregation. Right time when Martin Luther King but I say fast forward 60 years from then and you, you got democratic cities getting all this money. It ain't changing the inner cities. I, don't, I really wish I could get like a time machine and talk to him and say, why did you think when this money got sent to the local governments, where did you get the indication that they really was going to help out the inner city? They don't help out people in the trailer more. They, like, it, it ain't like they really choose. We're going to help black America or white America. They help their friends. If you black and you on their side and you cool, then you're going to get a bag too. But it's not about just helping everybody. Un unfortunately, I don't know where the money gets stuck at because we see it. 500 military aid going to Taiwan and Ukraine. Who knows how much money they didn't got. It's billions of dollars at this point. And meanwhile, the average American is struggling. So I just, I wish Martin Luther King could have knew the, the, the government does not care about its own citizens, which is extremely unfortunate. King said, March, we're going to have our march and cheese. <laughs> Hey, 
And you know, they've kicked us around a long time, haven't they? Yeah. And so many of us have come, we've come up in life without any shoes at all. And if it becomes necessary for us to march without shoes, we'll march barefooted. Yeah. I don't like the way you're clapping tonight. Are you ready to march? See, I can't get with the concept that we got time to go march, but we can't go find a job. Do we need somebody to give? You know, see, I just, I just can't get with a lot of principles, but maybe that's because I was raised by my father and my grandfather. But my daddy was born in 63. My grandpa was around at this time, and he wasn't out here marching and crying. He was working. He had his own house. We had a garden in our backyard and all that. So I, like I said, man, the narratives of the world is people that have been programmed to not think and do for self, and it's people that actually understand Faith without work is dead, and if you do not work, then you do not eat. Are you ready to march? <laughs> Man, we are not afraid of dogs. No. Are we children? No. Oh, you've been my dog. So many of us, we were raised up with dogs. Yeah. And we have had to, we have had to live the life of dogs right here in the United States of America. <laughs> I want you to raise your hand high tonight. Everybody that's ready to march, raise your hand high. Raise it high. Are you ready to march? This is why I say mental slavery is alive and well, because you've kept a mass population of people for decade after decade after decade not believing in themselves, not thinking they can do anything, accomplish anything, growing up, meeting spouses, having kids, and then raising their kids to think you still can't do nothing. You still ain't nothing. You just black. Like it's it's so unfortunate and it's so it's it's so heartbreaking. And and I and I just hope more parents can can speak life into these children, speak wisdom, speak courage speak positivity, speak love, speak abundance into their children and stop telling them that they are less than simply because their skin color is black. That is child abuse. Are you ready to march? Yeah. If you're ready to march, I want you to raise both of your hands above your head. I want you, now I want you to stand up on your feet, keep your hands high. Now bring them together and step them together. Everybody wants to lead them all to the slaughterhouse. Blind leading the blind. And so many were tricked into helping create the appearance of popular support for a conspiracy that hid its true objectives behind appealing slogans and humanitarian goals. A detachment of the deceived staged sit-ins. A handful of the hoaxed made freedom rides. A portion picketed and protested, while still others boycotted buses. And then more of the deluded mobs marched and demonstrated as it was in Cuba, where the leaders of the humanistic revolution Dude, marched with arms locked in camaraderie. So it is in the United States, where the leaders of the freedom movement march with arms locked in brotherhood. As it was in Cuba, where the comrades marched arm in arm to shouts of venceremos. So it is in the United States where the brothers march to the strains of We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, In 1965, Martin Luther King explained the purposes of the marches and demonstrations as follows. The goal of the demonstrations in Selma, as elsewhere, is to dramatize the existence of injustice and to bring about the presence of justice by methods of non-violence. 
Long years of experience indicate to us that Negroes can achieve this goal when four things occur. First, nonviolent demonstrations go into the streets to exercise their constitutional rights. Second, racists resist by unleashing violence against them. Third, Americans of conscience in the name of decency demand federal intervention and legislation. Fourth, the administration under mass pressure initiates measures of immediate intervention and remedial legislation. Ready to march with them? I didn't hear from everybody. Are you ready to march? As Martin Luther King said, demonstrators staged a huge march on Washington, D.C. to dramatize their demands. Which I have a video, I'll try to find it and link it in the description, about Malcolm X talking about how the march on Washington was staged. They staged demonstrations across the country. And as Martin Luther King said, violence was unleashed. Then accordingly, the federal government intervened and a vicious legislative step on the road to tyranny was enacted in the form of the Civil Rights Bill of 1964. Crazy. Their cause must be our cause too. Because it's not just Negroes, but really it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. Because he just say what it said, I'm gonna have these niggas vote Democrat the next 200 years. <laughs> He didn't say what said these niggas getting a little bit too uppity. <laughs> and we shall overcome. Man, look here. Hey, that sound like just like Joe Biden telling Charlemagne, if you don't know whether to vote for me or Trump, you ain't black. I, I, I swear when I look when I, I see Lyndon Baines Johnson, I have to squint my eyes and say, is that Joe Biden? Because they use the exact same playbook and it worked perfectly. <laughs> It's comical how much they literally bar for bar, line for line. It's like he wrote a, a, a mean diss track back in the 60s and Biden said, yeah, well, I'm, I'm doing that one again. I, I just hope and I pray that a, a, millions of people see this video and they just happen to wake up to the game that's been played on us. You are so much more to your skin color. You can do anything and you can accomplish anything in this world. But if you keep following behind these people that's manipulating you, you're going to keep losing your rights and your freedoms. And your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren are really going to suffer behind your ignorance. Black and white together, huh? Now we mean business. Are you ready to march with us? As Martin Luther King said, the demonstrators staged a huge march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, to dramatize their demands. And Malcolm X was sitting back laughing the whole time. No, they staged was demonstrations across the country. And as Martin Luther King had said, violence was unleashed against them. Then accordingly, the federal government intervened and still another vicious like legislative always. step toward tyranny was enacted in the form of the Voting Rights Bill of <laughs> 1965. Man. And these enemies, too, poverty, disease, and ignorance, we shall overcome. Do. Now, watching this film and knowing what you know about history and Lyndon Baines Johnson, doesn't it make you look into the whole JFK assassination a little different? It just has to, that that was the VP and as open-minded as JFK was, he gets popped and this man pops up and then the civil rights movement happened and here we are. Yeah, now something transpired in the 60s. There's no way you can tell me that Kennedy, King, Malcolm and Kennedy was able to be killed in a 10 year period. That, that's just, that's unrealistic unless that was a part of the great reset, which is agenda 2030. <laughs> I broke away from the party when it became clear to me what the communists were really up to. 
was to use the Negro people of this country as cannon fodder in a violent and bloody revolution aimed at the establishment of an American Soviet dictatorship. Give me that old freedom spirit. Give me that old freedom spirit. It's growing up for me. It was to be a communist revolution. But the great majority of the American people would not be allowed to realize that. And they still don't until know. Until it had already happened. They're still in the dark. If all goes according to the communist blueprint, Americans will believe that the chaos and violence has something to do with civil rights. Make no mistake about it. What is happening in the United States right now under the banner of civil rights right now. is exactly what has happened in China, in Cuba, in Algeria, and in many other places around the world. The goal of the international communist conspiracy is world domination. They have thus far been highly successful in accomplishing the step-by-step -step objectives necessary for reaching that goal. In the United States, the communist plans call for two revolutions at once. A revolution of a supposedly oppressed proletariat or working class against a capitalistic system that is supposed to breed wage slavery, unemployment, poverty, crises, and war. The second revolution is a revolt of the supposedly poor and oppressed Negroes of the Black Belt against the supposed lynching, segregation, social ostracism, and exploitation of the white man. Currently, what the communists call their Negro revolutionary movement, now masquerading behind the humanitarian banners of civil rights, is contributing tremendous momentum to the communist plans to take over the United States. Divide the people. Get them fighting among themselves rather than their common enemy. Create the appearance of popular support through a favorable press and the use of terror, intimidation, and the creation of martyrs. Make the world believe the revolution is a popular one, particularly among those being liberated. Neutralize the opposition. When obstructionists to the cause become too irritating, label them as fascist, Nazi, anti-Semitic, extremist, racist, controversial. Precipitate mob violence. Get the mobs into the streets. March this is and demonstrate. Or as the again, demonstrations uh... grow in number and intensity, they will acquire political character through the desired collision and open combat with the forces of law and order. Since mass action culminates in insurrection and civil war, what of the fifth principle of the communist strategy? Create the semblance of revolution. Had not this rotten, fascist, racist cop, lieutenant, that killed the young Powell boy, had he not killed the boy, the boy very well might have died in South Vietnam in the name of freedom. Tell me I don't sound like if I had a son, he would like Trayvon. <laughs> They've been using the same playbook for the last 60 years, dog. It makes no sense. I was also asked to tell you not to get your passion so high, not to get too worked up. However, I think many of us are going to have to choose where we're going to die at. Where are we going to die at? What? We're going to have to decide whether we're going to die on the streets of the United States or in South Vietnam. I would choose the United States myself. I would choose the United States myself. Why do we got to die? I, I, 
help me understand that. <laughs> like, once again, that's why I say we've never had, we've never been able to experience the benefits of capitalism. We've never been able to ex experience the benefits of freedom. It's just, you're gonna die. You can't do anything, you're black. And this is from other, other black individuals. I, I can't think of five white people who run around talking about white supremacy. But every time I turn on the TV, it's some extremely wealthy black individual saying, man, the white man has hold me back. Man, it's hard being black in America. It's the, the, the black individuals that we see on TV, the puppets given to us, those are the biggest threats to the masses of black children. I, I, I need more parents to, to be involved and really speak life into your children once again, because this is a message that's coming from the mainstream media that you're going to die anyway. <laughs> From Havana, Cuba, free territory of the Americas, Radio Free Dixie invites you to listen to the free voice of the South. Stay with us for music, news, and commentary by Robert F. Williams. Robert F. Williams, a fugitive wanted by the state of North Carolina and the Justice Department, broadcasts weekly revolutionary messages beamed into the United States from Cuba. <laughs> we shall Jason, take the what? torch of freedom and justice into the streets of America, and we shall set the last great stronghold of Yankee imperialism ablaze with our battle cry of freedom. Freedom now of death. For our people... In the monthly newsletter published in Cuba and sent into the United States through Canada, the revolutionist Williams tells the Negroes of this nation, we must be willing to suffer jail. We must be willing to suffer death. We must be willing to kill for freedom. Why people always want you to throw your life away? There are Gestapo policemen on every street corner. It's just like Mississippi. And I predict things are going to grow worse. In fact, I think policemen are going to be dead before this situation is over. During the summers of 1964 and 1965, the demonstrations became riots, finally culminating in the worst race riot in this nation's history in the Watts District of Los Angeles. Across the United States, law enforcement officers were dead, and Negroes did die in the streets, and the situation was far from over. Seven days after the rioting broke out in Watts, a new newspaper started publication, The Voice of All the Oppressed and Exploited. Calling for the workers of the world to unite, this new voice of the people declared that... All the people of the U.S. who oppose U.S. imperialism wish to thank the Communist Party of China and the Chinese people for their pledge of support for the people of Los Angeles in their struggle against U.S. imperialism. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. A bomb was just dropped right there. Did y'all catch that? That this whole communist movement has been supported by China? In keeping with communist principles and expectations, the atmosphere of hatred generated in the Watts riot resulted in 32 martyrs for the cause of liberation. In their memory, we pledge to destroy U.S. imperialism. In 1928, and again in 1934, and still again in 1965, we hear... The Negro people constitute a nation in the Black Belt of the South. And lest there should be any misunderstanding, Nobel Peace Prize winner Martin Luther King followed the example of Lenin Peace Prize winner Fidel Castro and Lenin Peace Prize winner Ben Bella and protested that, I am sick and tired of people saying this movement has been infiltrated by communists and communist sympathizers. There are as many communists in this freedom movement as there are Eskimos in Florida. Dude. Do, 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 do. Um, and as I've said, 
I don't want to tell you how to think or what to think. I just want to put concepts out there to make you think. When I start digging in history, it definitely made me look at Barack Obama a little, a little differently. It, it made me look at, why don't you dig into who Barack Obama's mentor is, by the way, and see that he was the leader of the Hawaii Communist Party. Like I said, this thing is tricky. And there's individuals all around the world, in China and Russia and Spain and Germany. I, I just want to talk to people and have these conversations without the labels. And that's racist. That's offensive. No, I'm genuinely trying to figure out what the hell is going on in the world. And everything I've been taught has been a lie from my public schools, from my mainstream TV, from social media. And if I've been lied to here in America, I know the people in China are probably lied to. I know the people in Spain, in Australia, in Germany. So I'm just trying to have intellectual conversations with like-minded individuals. No man is your friend. No man is your enemy. Everyone can be a teacher if you allow. So let me know in the comments below. Teach me some new things. What, what's your thoughts about the information that has been presented to you? Did you already know this? If yes, where did you learn it from? If no, how does this make you feel? Does it make you look at life and history different? But be the change you wish to see in the world. Spread love, spread positive vibe. You can do anything. You can accomplish anything. And as Frederick Douglass said, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. We out, baby. Peace.